before the Q&A, there's going to be one last thing I want to I wanna know. Um, like I said before, and since we now there's a lot of things we need to do, um, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a long policy. It's going to be a, a long struggle to get people to be as safe as we want them to be. Um, of course, we can't avoid the question of cost, right? Um, and uh, maybe I want, I just want to know. I mean, I've I've never been to Germany. I've never. You're probably the second German I've spoken to. Sorry, um, but uh, is it how, how is it on, on, on the pocket in Germany um, when it comes to vehicle inspection? Is it as uh, as uh, as expensive as we're now starting to imagine it to be? Sounds like it, isn't it? Yeah. No. Um, I doesn't agree with because me. Yeah. that is um, everybody. Everybody is aware yeah. about that uh, this yeah. inspection will come yeah, on a regular basis, and um, this is considered in the you would say overall cost of ownership for a customer when he when he know when he go when he go and buy a car. Yeah. And um, I can I can also give you the figure what it what it costs for one inspection in Germany. So, but then you have to compare it to the to, to what would it be cost here in in, in, yeah. in Malaysia? I guess but it makes no sense no, no, to to say the figure. Um, it is not not that much money, yeah. Um, in terms of uh, in, in, uh, if, if you can see what what could it be, uh, the, what is the benefit? I would say if we could save a life, and uh, then everybody would say, okay, I would pay. Would pay a certain amount of my of my money uh, out of my pocket, and uh, pay my contribution on uh, on uh, on that. So and um, therefore, this uh, cost cost is not an issue in uh, in, German, in Germany in this in this in these terms. Mm. Uh, Let me just add on to the cost. Okay, uh, you know basically the, the rule of thumb. Okay, uh, for this testing, either in Japan, in Germany, and other developed nations, the rule of thumb is is the cost of vehicle equals to a full tank. There's the rule of thumb, plus minus. Okay? Yeah, uh, can I just add sure. a little bit? Uh, uh, actually, there's a controversy that uh, is periodic inspection cost effective way of ensuring safety or not? So I think you have to do a lot of home, your homework yeah, on that. Whether periodic inspection is cost effective or not in maintaining road. Safety. Of course, there are there are other ways. You know, periodic inspection is one of the ways that uh, you can uh, ensure road safety. You know? mm. And on the e the end of life, uh, like uh, you know, I agree with the DSCO that the end of life may scare people's mindset. You know? So it's, it's more to uh, inspection for roadworthiness if it's. Uh, comply to the uh, inspection standard then of course it is allowed to be on the road yeah but currently just to remind you that uh, only commercial vehicles are subject for the compulsory six monthly periodic inspection not the passenger cars as yet yeah so we are we are yet to embark on that if we look at our neighbor Singapore for example uh, the uh, private vehicle has been inspected since more than 30 years ago, you know. So why can't we? So, so I think uh, it's, it's a thinker for you uh, to explore for the how how to make that possible. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, when talk about vehicle inspection, it boils down also to vehicle maintenance. Yeah. Like I said just now, uh, they are uh, this uh, periodic man maintenance where you do, for example, oil change every 5,000 kilometers, uh, then the, you do uh, corrective maintenance if there's a repair. And uh, seldom Malaysian do predictive maintenance. You know, predictive maintenance require more sophisticated uh, uh, gadget and equipment so that you can foresee or you can anticipate what's going uh, the the uh, wear and tear you know, of of a vehicle when is that component is going to break down so i i don't think currently malaysian mindset has got to that level yes yet huh? then of course when you talk about man maintenance there are many reasons that are affecting the attitude of the car owner to to uh, get this maintenance done i i may quote you some of the reason is that uh, First is about the cost, the user's uh, economy factor. Like when you buy, buy, buy a car, a choice of car, when you buy a car, you do not think of the maintenance part. This car, uh, you feel is comfortable, is that uh, you are financially comfortable or not? 
Uh, so you, you you have to make that uh, uh, aware to the the uh, potential car buyer, yeah. Whether they are potenti- uh, financially comfortable or not, yeah. If they are not poten- uh, financially comfortable, of course they will neglect the maintenance part, yeah. Mm. Then the <coughs> another one is about uh, supply of uh, inappropriate automotive parts. See, when we send our car to a workshop, uh, most, most of us uh, doesn't know this part is a genuine part, imitation part. I mean, we, we, we do not know. We are, so, we are so honest, you know? So we just let the uh, mechanics do, do the job. So the uh, supply of these inappropriate parts is not in, a, not in good, good con- 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 control. So meaning that uh, we are con in that sense, you know, you you do not know you you do not want to use those imi- imitation part, but uh, you you are when when you send in a vehicle because of lack lack of uh, this uh, awareness knowledge or what, then the uh, rampant of availability of this part, so so it's there, yeah. Then the, with this uh, you know the half cut the kereta potong, kereta potong. The, the, the industry is uh, flourishing. Why? Because old car, antique cars, you don't have enough supply of spare part. So the industry is still survive. You know? uh, so I mean, this is some of the reason that uh, I can think of just to share with you. Thank yeah. you. But from, uh, from my experience at least, um, this crater uh, potong or this, uh, what do you call it? Pirated parts um, or unoriginal parts uh, it's not just limited to antique cars, right? Um, but it, it, it's always offered when you go to a workshop, you want to buy the cheaper one with no guarantee. This one, three bulan saja, right? Um, I'm sure um, on the, the government side, they're aware of this. Um, what are the barriers to overcoming this and why do they happen? Um, this issue of after sales of, of parts, not. Yeah, um, you know, the aftermarket in Malaysia um, has been, I would use the word, you know, been left out uh, to survive on its own. You know, um, we talk about a lot on manufacturing. Yeah, you know, like Proton, Peradua, Toyota, Honda, and the vendor community. So all of them got standards. They got ISO TS, ISO 9001, ISO EMS, OSHAs. You know, following Toyota production system, Honda standards, name it. They have all sort of standards. You know, and uh, th- there is no act actually to say that this vendor, you must comply to this standard for you to supply to to any vehicle manufacturer. It's not even a law, you know. But but the manufacturing sector has been self-regulated to a level that all of them, you know, practice it uh, automatically. You know, but then in the aftermarket, you know, it is not self-regulated, and uh, you know, things has been left on on their own. So, for example, you can open a workshop. And you can employ anybody, you know, who, who knows, you know, how to book an engine and so on, do a, a, a servicing, and, 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 and then you can just open a workshop. You know, there's no really a real, you know, uh, uh, act or what to regulate that. Okay, the same thing, for example, spare parts. Okay, uh, we were talking about the potong and so on, spare parts. Some of the spare parts that are of safety related, you know, what are the standards? You know, and standards is one thing. The availability of standards is one thing, but the other thing is, where do we perform? Where can we perform the test to, 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 to ensure that these parts adhere to the specification or to the standards uh, that have been set for, the comp- for, for this particular component? And the process of dismantling, you know the process of potong, eh? uh, kita potong ni, it's not as, as straightforward. You know, and if this process, if there's no SOP, you know, to dismantle, then, then basically, you know, any, uh, I would say, and anyone in that, that business will then start his process according to his own whims and fancies, according to his own you know, idea how to open it. So again, there is no standard. Now, because of all this, that it created a lot of safety issues, uh, created uh, difficulty to implement uh, uh, ELV, etc., and so on. That is why, actually, the new policy, 2013 policy, is taking into consideration the whole aspect of framing. We call it regulatory framework of the aftermarket that includes regulatory framework on 
the dealers, on the workshop, on the kereta potong, on the vehicle inspection, etc. and so on. So you will see later on, okay, actually the whole aftermarket is a market that will further flourish, but it will, it will flourish based on a proper regulatory framework and it will be a self-regulatory industry. And that is the vision uh, of our policy, you know, and we even estimate for them to even export their components to other countries now that they are dismantling components that are of certain standards. Okay? Even, you know, bear, bear with me, some of, the, of, some, some of you who, who wish to work in the aftermarket, you know, is going to be a high-tech aftermarket. You have heard about level of inspection. Predictive maintenance require good engineers to perform, to handle, to implement the equipment, the application, the software, etc., and so on, and to perform analysis of the results. Okay, so all these are stuff that are to come, and, and that's why we think actually there's more awareness campaign that is to come. Today is for the vehicle inspection. You know, there are more to come, uh, really, to help implement this policy. Uh, you know, with regard to, as we mentioned, you know, uh, today's vehicle inspection, then, then later on in, in the near future, there'll be other competition with regard to uh, workshop, with regard to modernization, with regard to, you know, uh, services uh, of, of, of machine engines, etc., and so on. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, just to conclude what has been happened here, like, we can see now there's a lot of milestones that have to be um, achieved before we get to a certain point. You can see now that the automotive industry isn't just about selling cars. It's about producing parts, it's about manufacturing, it's about research. It's also about after sales. And there's a very important aspect. So if you're thinking of being an engineer in the automotive industry, there's so many aspects that you can um, look into. You can talk to Mr. Madani. He can probably offer you a job too. Um, 